Welcome to the first video in our cardiac measurement video series. In this video we're going to look at how to measure or calculate the left atrial to aortic root ratio or LAAO ratio. Please note that the videos in this series are intended as how-to guides and we're not going to discuss the in indications for making the measurements in the first place nor are we going to discuss interpretation of the results and their implications. In order to make these measurements, the first thing we need to do is to acquire the appropriate view. And in the case of the LAAO ratio, the appropriate view is a right parasternal short axis view through the base of the heart at the level of the aortic valve. If you're already comfortable acquiring this view accurately, repeatably and reliably every time, then please carry on watching. On the other hand, if you would like some advice, if you fast forward to the end of this video and then click the link, that'll take you through to our online cardiac ultrasound training course. So we'll start by popping our probe on the dog and just acquiring a short axis view here at the level of the papillary muscles. And then by fanning dorsally away from us, we're gonna go through the fish mouth view at the level of the mitral valve. And then we'll arrive at our, our ideal view. So that's the short axis view at the level of the aortic valve through the base of the heart. And if we just pause the image for a second there, we can review the anatomy. In the center of the screen, the um, almost round structure we have is the aortic root in cross section, and we can see the aortic valve leaflets meeting in the middle there to create this Mercedes-Benz sign that gives the, this view its name. And then on over to the right of that, we can see curling around here, the right ventricular outflow tract. Below the aorta, we can see the sort of tail of a comma which is the left oracle and then if you like the body of the comma over to the left here which is the left atrium. In order to make our measurements as accurate, reliable and repeatable as possible and therefore to maximise their usefulness, it's worth taking some time just to optimise the image as best you can. In the case of this view, the optimization we're looking for is to make the aorta as circular as possible. Now you're not going to get it as a to, to form a perfect circle it's more of a sort of three leaf clover shape but just try to make it as circular as you can try to make sure that you include or you have to make sure that you include all of the aortic valve leaflets so that all three arms if you like of the mercedes-benz sign and we also want to be able to see the left oracle forming the tail of the comma as it were below the aorta as you can see here on the screen once you're happy that you have the view optimised, we're just going to allow several cardiac cycles to pass and then we'll store a cine loop. In practice, what you're going to do is to go through acquiring all of the cine loops you need in the different views for the various measurements you want to make. And then you can go back and make the measurements later at your leisure rather than trying to do it as you're scanning the animal. For the purposes of this video though, and the videos in the rest of the series, we're just going to store a cine loop and then move straight on to making the measurement. Once you've stored your cine loop, we'll then load that cine loop up and we can use our trackball or trackpad just to scroll forwards and backwards through that cine loop timeline. And what we're looking to do is to get the first frame in which the aortic valve leaflets have closed. So basically the first frame in which we can see the Mercedes-Benz sign following uh, systole, one, one cardiac cycle systole where the aortic valve leaflets have been open. Usually what you'll end up doing is scrolling, if you like, grossly forward and backwards with the trackball or trackpad, and then your machine may then have a, f if you like, fine control where you can skip forward one or two frames or back one or two frames at a time just to make sure that you get that exact as accurately as you can the first frame in which that aortic valve is closed. Having found the appropriate frame, so that frame, the first frame in which the aortic valve leaflets have closed and formed that Mercedes-Benz sign, then we'll select LAAO from our measurements menu and exactly how you do that will depend on which machine you use. Um, just if you're not sure how to do it, then consult your your colleagues or your 
um, ultrasound machine instruction manual. In most cases, the machine will then prompt you to start making the measurement by giving you some instructions. Now they do all vary slightly, but most machines will ask you to measure the aortic root diameter first and sub subsequently the left atrial diameter. Just beware and check which your machine is asking you to do first because again, in most cases, they will then make the calculation of left atrial diameter divided by aortic diameter for you. If you've measured, measured them in the wrong order, then you may end up having aortic diameter divided by left atrial diameter, which is gonna obviously give you the inverse result and can look confusing. There are, broadly speaking, two accepted ways of measuring this parameter, the LA-AO ratio. Um, you may have heard them referred to as the American method and the Swedish method. I'm not going to discuss the relative merits of both methods now. Suffice to say, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using the Swedish method. So the first step in the Swedish method is for us to place the first cursor point at the, if you like, the start of what will be the first line we're going to draw, which will be the a line across the diameter of the aortic root. The obvious question then is where precisely do we place that cursor? Well, using the Swedish method, the first cursor is placed at the right aortic sinus, just here, and we're going to then extend a line across the diameter of the aortic root, going through the point where the aortic valve leaflets meet, i.e. the center of the Mercedes-Benz sign, and it should then extend along the line between the left coronary cusp, which is this one here, and the non-coronary cusp, which is this one here. So it's, if you like, the lower left arm of the Mercedes-Benz sign as you look at this image. The obvious question we now face is precisely where do we put this cursor because the aortic wall has a finite thickness to it. So do we place the cursor, cursor on the luminal surface of that wall? Do we place it somewhere in the middle of the thickness of the wall or do we place it on the outer surface? There is no 100% consensus on this, no hard and fast rule, but the most commonly accepted method is what's called the leading edge to leading edge method. Now effectively, if you imagine that this heart is were, were moving from left to right on the image, what's the right hand surface, if you like, of any wall thicknesses here could be described as the leading edge. And so we're going to always measure from leading edge to leading edge. So in this instance, we would place our cursor on the outer wall of the aorta here at the right aortic sinus. We will then extend our line across the diameter of the aortic root, but then we will place the cursor on what will be the luminal surface of the wall just here. So we've effectively included this wall thickness and not this one cursor placement for our left atrial diameter measurement is going to be in the exact same position as the second cursor placement for the aortic root diameter measurement so we essentially just click again to place that third cursor and then we're going to move this fourth cursor across the diameter of the atrium such that it lies on the again remembering our leading edge to leading edge method on the luminal surface of the atrial wall down here in the bottom left of the image and if you notice what we're trying to do is to measure across the diameter of the atrium such that the line across the diameter of the atrium is a continuation of the line across the aortic root diameter. Now you may find that the far atrial wall where you're wanting to place this cursor is missing if you happen to have caught a pulmonary vein in the plane of your image where it's draining into the left atrium. In that case, you have two choices. You can either place your cursor slightly up or slightly down on the screen such that you're at a place where there is evidence of atrial wall, although you'll notice then obviously we're not measuring absolutely across the diameter of the atrium potentially, or more appropriately, you can in your mind's eye if you like, imagine a continuation of the atrial wall as if it were completing the, the sort of curved surface that you can make out higher up in the image and then sort of guesstimate where that wall would be and place your cursor in about the right position. There are, of course, inaccuracies in both ways of, you know, both methods of doing that and really just need to use whichever you find most, most useful for you. Once you've completed those two measurements, you will find that the machine then calculates the LA-AO ratio for you. If your machine doesn't, don't worry about it, it's very simple maths. You're simply di dividing the diameter of the left atrium in centimetres by the diameter of the aorta or aortic root in centimetres, and that should give you a ratio somewhere between about 1 and 1.5. As I say, I don't want to discuss the results here, but that's just so that you've got a, a, an approximate check that you're getting about the right figures. That's the kind of order of magnitude we want to be in. If you're getting figures of, say, around about 
0.7. Just bear in mind that's about the inverse of 1.5 and it may be that you have inadvertently measured the two dimensions in the, in the opposite order from what your machine is actually intending so that you've ended up to all intents and purposes having aortic root diameter divided by left atrial diameter not the other way around. So that's it for calculating the LAAO ratio. Please just bear in mind though that with, as with all measurements that we make in veterinary practice, a single standalone measurement is not terribly accurate or reliable. And it's now advised that you repeat these measurements over five cardiac cycles. So five different measurements in five different cardiac cycles and then obviously take an average of those. If you've got any clearly uh, erroneous or aberrant results that are, are nothing like the remaining four, then it's probably worth, again, taking, taking a sixth or a seventh measurement um, and then averaging only the values that are similar to one another rather than including a, a clearly erroneous result. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that useful. Please feel free to move on to the second video in the series in which we'll be discussing how to calculate the EPSS or E-point septal separation.